What's exciting about science is making discoveries, discoveries that nobody else in the world knows about. You develop some auto radiograph, you look at the film, and, and you go, wow. Uh, and you now understand something that nobody else understood before. To me, there's nothing more interesting than genetics and the study of mutants, because when you study a mutant, uh, that uncovers what the normal process really is. Marty's an award-winning faculty member because of his excellent science. He's had a career of making seminal discoveries in plant biology. But he's also, much more broadly, a great faculty member. I think what inspired me to get into the area of plant development, and in particular flower and fruit development, really traces back uh, more than 25 years ago to one particular mutant. It's a mutant that has no stamens and carpels, no reproductive organs. And I knew that this mutant obviously was going to tell us about a gene that was required for reproductive organs to form in flowering plants. That one mutant has really led to all of our future studies. Martin Yanofsky's research is important in, in several respects. As a scientist, I, I suppose my, uh, my strongest impression is of the uh, incredible impact it has had on the research community. He has had a long career uh, working in plant biology. He was one of the people who came up with the methods for transgenesis in plants that allowed DNA to be transferred to plants. Did absolutely seminal, groundbreaking work as a postdoctoral fellow, elucidating the, the genetic circuitry underlying uh, how flowers form. After studying flower development for more than a decade, we, we kind of transitioned into a new area, which was fruit development. Uh, the fruit, of course, is the product of the flower. And so we started looking for mutants where the fruits were abnormal. And from those abnormal fruits, we identified the corresponding genes. And to summarize years of work by a number of people, we were able to develop a framework model for the regulatory interactions of the major genes that control fruit development. There are many interesting aspects of how the fruits are developing, from the very first part where they're a part of a flower to then how they become actually the fruit itself. But one of the very important aspects of that is how parts of the fruit on the outside come together to form the whole fruit. And what Marty has done in his understanding of how that biology works, that developmental biology works, to put those two halves together, he has come up with a, a very simple means by, of, of, a, of preventing that fission along the, the two sides so that the seeds remain inside the pot. The basic research often leads to applications, and some of our research has now been applied in crop plants and has led to increases in the yield of those crops and that has huge impact on the production of, for example, canola oil, wherein normally half of the product is lost on the ground, and because of Marty's technology, it's all mostly retained now in the seed, so that basically means that you need half the amount of land to grow the same amount of crop. Anytime you can increase the yield of a crop, that means you can grow the same crop on less land, using less water, less chemical pesticides and fertilizers, and so forth. The research that we do uh, provides training opportunities for talented undergraduates, uh, graduate students, and postdoctoral fellows. And it's those people that will hopefully go on to make their own discoveries in the future.